So, welcome back to part two of the AX7 setup. Um, well, in this session, we are going to have a look at how to create the currency exchange rates, the bank sublet, the bank subledger, and we are going to buy Swiss francs versus euros. Um, as already mentioned in part one, uh, it is not kind of an advertisement video of AX, and it should not show how great Dynamics AX is or whatever. It is actually just a trial of setting up up um, a mandate in the brand new version of AX7. Um, it is just um, a technical release in the end, so it's just a kind of a beta version and not yet a released version. Therefore, as already mentioned in part one, uh, there could be some errors, but we hope that there won't be too many errors. Perfect. So, this means nothing else that I can close my presentation and I'm in AX. Perfect. So, the currency exchange rates, if uh, it is still at the same place, then it's under general ledger and then currencies, and then I need to create an exchange rate type. Good. Um, let's click on new. And my company is 010, so I just say here that I create an exchange rate type for my company. My company is a German company because the Swiss localization is not yet available unfortunately but it will be quite soon so after the next release or the real release the Swiss version should be of course the Swiss localization should be available as well so I clicked on exchange rates and what I need to have because I just have um, a euro and a Swiss franc bank account I just need to have here the conversion the conversion let's say start 1st of January and well, it is, let's say, 1.05 Swiss francs for one euro, which is then fine. Perfect. So this means I need to go to ledger and, of course, I do need to add it to the ledger. And let's see if this is still possible, because I actually already... Yep, posted something but this means I can add here the exchange rate type to the ledger of my company and I can save it perfect so we have the exchange rate types we are not yet working with realized and unrealized gains and losses this will be way later on where we are going to add these accounts good so um, next would be since we are going to create the bank sub ledger just quickly show you how my main accounts look like so my main accounts will be found here under accounts and main accounts i really have to mention i really before my first video i just was five minutes uh, in it so it's really also more or less my first time but when you're used to ax 2012 then it's quite similar actually there's just one thing that i didn't got yet but we'll see later on. So I have two bank, I have two bank accounts, and both bank accounts um, are actually stated that. Um, maybe I need to click here. Yep. Okay. And then I can click here, and then I see the other accounts. Okay. Great. So both bank accounts are stated that do not do not allow manual entry, and which means nothing else. Then, um, well, we need to go over the subledger. In this case, over the bank subledger. So I click here on cash and bank management, and I go to bank accounts, and I'm just going to create the bank account master data, and just connect it to the bank account itself. So I just say UBS UR. So bank account number doesn't matter at all. And important is that I'm, I'm choosing here in the main account, the bank euro um, account, UBS euro. I don't need to have bank group. The currency is euro, of course. And any kind of other, other thing is for the moment not needed. Also the address not at the moment at least. Good. Um, I click on new. And I'm also going to create a new UBS, a UBS underscore CHF. Main account is in this case, of course, this account here, um, UBS CHF. And the currency is in this case, CHF. Blah. CHF, yep, Swiss francs 
perfect. By the way, for those who don't know AX that good, with Alt and Arrow down, you can always open the drop down field. Good. So uh, just quickly click on save. I know it's not even needed, but anyhow. Good. So we have added the bank accounts, which means nothing else. Then now I can go to general ledger and to journal entries and create a general journal. The general journal types or names were already created in the first session. So I can also choose here, general journal, my first bank transaction. And still the same as in AX 2012. If you click on lines and in here, because I added do not allow manual entry, we will end up in an error. So it's not allowed for uh, manual entries, which means nothing else than I need to switch here the sub ledger. Instead of the general ledger, I have to use the sub ledger, which is in this case um, UBS Swiss francs. We buy Swiss francs, yeah. We buy CHF for, so we buy, let's say, one thousand Swiss francs for let's say 900 euros just as an example as a description um, so this means now I can say here I debit 1000 currency Swiss francs and here again against the bank subledger and in this case I need to choose UBS euro Okay, um, perfect, the exchange rate is already here. So I just quickly click on save because when I click save, then normally this one down there should be updated. Correct, perfect. So um, what you see now is actually that the exchange rate is used based on the thing that we've added to the exchange rate type. So in the end, nothing else than of course, it's English calculator. So nothing else than 1 divided by 1.04, F05, which is this exchange rate. Of course, um, we said we are going to buy 1,000 Swiss francs for 900 euros. And in here, down there, you see it would post now 952 euros. Um, Euro is, by the way, the, the company currency. So this means nothing else. And I need to say here, I want to change the exchange rate click on save that those things down there are updated and now we would actually post 1000 swiss francs versus 900 euros onto the bank accounts so this means nothing else then this should be fine so i can click on post and if everything worked fine ax will post the thing and posting result for batch number blah 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 Post result, this posting result for journal batch number, message details, currency code Swiss francs is not specified in, um, not allowed for account. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. So I have an error message and of course on the bank account, and unfortunately, this is what I don't get yet. I'm not yet able to somehow change or to switch to the main table. So that therefore, at the moment, until I <laughs> until I found find out where it is or how to do, I need to go always the long way. So I need to go back to the bank account. And I just forgot a flag. Of course, we want to post onto the UBS Euro account also in different currencies. So like we did now. So somewhere should be the question, yeah, allow transaction in, in additional currency. Yes, save on the Swiss franc bank account. This is normally not needed because you just normally you're just going to post in the foreign uh, in your local currency in a foreign currency, but not in a foreign currency in your local currency. So therefore, here in UBS Swiss francs, um, you don't need to add it to yes. Good, let's try it again. So the journal should be still available, of course. So journal entries, general journal. And here it is. And let's say post directly here without having a look at the transaction. And 
number of posted vouchers. Perfect. So it posted now. So uh, this means now we posted 900 euros onto the Eurobank account or credited the Eurobank account with 900 euros and debited the Swiss franc account with 1000. So this means nothing else. Then I can also just have a quick look here. No, let's have a look at first on the general ledger and then on the trial balance to see how these accounts look like. So, of course, the trial balance is always shown in your accounting currency, so in euros. And of course, uh, since debit and credit needs to be the same, uh, he debited 900 euros also on Swiss franc bank account and credited 900 euros on the euro bank account. So this means for reconciliation or everything, um, you always need to go over the bank subledger basically just to see um, what is the real amount of it. So this means um, there should be somewhere bank statement, bank transaction, bank account, bank transactions, no check, bank reconciliation. Yeah, okay, here, um, bank statement. Good. So uh, we expect in the end, what the hell so, is this? Hi and welcome um, to my first okay. steps in... <laughs> okay, my last video from the last <laughs> from the last step just opened, and that's why um, there was just kind of a window opening, but I closed it. Perfect. So this means um, I choose here opening period first of December, the closing the 31st of December, and I choose at first the Eurobank account, and I click on OK, and we expect here to have a report which is showing 900 euros, and it does, so that's perfect. UBS Euro, currency Euro, and we have one transaction over the amount of 900. Good, um, let's see if I can somehow change here. The values don't look like, I just quickly rerun it. Um, I guess that it will be there will be the option as well to just switch the values directly on the screen but i'm not yet sure how to do it like i'm still also not sure how i can <laughs> how i can jump to the related table but um, of course i could just reprint the whole thing and i as you can see here we have currency swiss franc ubs swiss franc and we have an amount of 1000 so basically the subledger is totally reconciled to um, the bank statement that you hopefully get from your bank <laughs> in the end plus the accounting currency in here 900. Uh, let's have a look at the export um, pdf and open I don't have okay. I don't have Adobe. I don't have <laughs> Adobe on it. So okay, that's that won't work, of course, because I just have Word. But anyhow, um, so basically, as you can see, uh, it is working quite fine. So perfect. So this was it with this session. So uh, we will move on, of course, with the next session. So uh, I hope you enjoyed <laughs> this part, and I hope I will see you in part three.